Extreme 3D Butterfly on a Flower Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you this extremely 3D butterfly nail that I did that kind of is part of a series that I started over a year ago and then just kind of was progressively adding pieces to it and I haven't added the last one in a while. So this is the last part of that series of my extremely 3D insects and arachnid. Um, so if you're interested in any of the other ones, I'll put links to those in the description box below. And I also quickly want to mention that the butterfly is based off of these really cool 3D butterfly stickers that I got that I'm going to be decorating my mirror with in my bathroom. And those are from Enjoy Yours, and I'll put links to those in the description box as well. So if you're interested in those, check that out, and I will see you in my next video. So here are the butterflies and just a little piece of my bathroom. Um, and and kind of apologize for the amazingly clutteredness that it looks. It actually isn't that cluttered. It just, I've got lots of little ornaments. Like I've got little flowers around the top of my mirror, but adding the butterflies was definitely a cute touch. And they came with this little um, double-sided foam sticky tape stuff to use. And the foam sticky tape is actually sticky. I know sometimes you get those things and it's not sticky and it doesn't stick to anything. This actually stuck. So there's a benefit. And the butterflies themselves, I was expecting them to be like a cardstock or something, but they're actually, they're plastic, but they're bendy. So you can adjust the way or how bent the wings are and you can play with them some that way too. And they're, they're really bright and colorful and intense and Oh, I was pretty impressed with them. One thing I do want to say about sticky tape, though, is that you do actually have to press it on, and you can't just, like, gently do it, which I did for a couple of them, and then I had to go back and put it back on, but then they were fine. Then they were fine after that point, and there was a whole bunch of different color combinations that you could get. Um, pink, blue, then I want to say maybe orange. I'm not sure, but you, there's different colors. I went with the pink ones, obviously. So I just went through, and I just decorated them, and there are different sizes they've got different patterns on them no two were the same too which was i thought that was cool some of the wings were a little bit differently shaped as well so here's just a couple close-up pictures to show them better because i know that it was there was a lot of clutter and it's hard to see because i have so much stuff in my bathroom so i'm gonna take and make the nail and i'm gonna start with just a layer of clear acrylic as an overlay this is just for strength i did not do an any more acrylic that goes over the top of the entire thing. So this layer was really, really important. And because the majority of the nail is covered in 3D, it doesn't have to be super thick because it is going to get strength from that. It just has to be enough acrylic that it is going to be strong enough not to just die if you touch it. So then because I am covering up the entire thing in 3D, I did not file this nail. I looked at it, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's good enough. And I just continued on. If you do need to file it though, go for it. It's not like it's a problem. I just didn't see the need. So then I'm going to start and I'm going to be making all of my little 3D petals. So I just put down a petal of white and then I just pressed it out a little bit once it started to turn matte a little bit. Not when it gets super done, but you know, just a little, let it set for a second. And then with a flat edge silicone tool, I'm gonna go through and just add all of the little little marks in it. So just a whole bunch of little lines. And so the first one I did was coming from the top of the nail or from the cuticle down to the center. And then the next one I'm going to do is going to go from the tip of the nail to the center once again. So it's these two long ones to start with. Same thing though, add the petal, flatten it out a little bit, then add the little lines with a flat edge silicone tool. Those little silicone tools, I don't know if you guys have them or not. They are amazing for things like that they're the best thing to create those little lines and textures in acrylic like that. So then I'm going to be adding the rest of the petals and because obviously the nail is not as wide as it is long, they're not all going to be as long as the first two. So when you get towards the ones on the side, don't continue them on off the nail. I mean, you could if you'd like to, you could make a big, a really big flower, but I didn't. I stopped them at the edge of the nail and just kind of cropped them off a little bit. So I'm going to do two more, one next to the first two that I added, and then I'm going to leave that last one because I want you don't want to work next to a petal that is still a little bit moldable because you are probably going to mess it up. So only work next to petals that are already set. So kind of jump around and go back and forth a little bit just so that you have that assurance that you're not going to ruin one that you've already worked on. So I'm going to be adding the last one on that side, touch it up a little bit, go through and add the last one on the other side. And this is just with white acrylic on that clear background. And then with that last one, just add a couple little lines in it. Once again, with the silicone tool. And then with yellow acrylic, I'm going to be adding a circle in the center of my flower, just like that very center. So if those little points in the very middle aren't perfect and they kind of go askew, it doesn't matter because you're covering up now anyway. And then with a pointy silicone tool, a cone shaped one, just add a whole bunch of little dots, a little pokes in the center of that yellow, just to give it that texture too. And then on a nail form backing, I'm going to start sculpting out the wings of my butterfly. So I'm going to begin with the top wings, the upper, the upper wings, and I'm going to be just creating that shape. And the acrylic that I am using is a 
I always think of them as double dipping. It's a double dipping bead of dark teal and aqua or medium teal, I suppose. It's not really dark, but I wanted to kind of have that almost gradient, but kind of streaky watercolor looking, watercolor looking thing. So that's the way that I did that. So I first went into the lighter color and then into the darker color and then set it down on your little nail form backing and then start adding all of your acrylic on there or all of you start shaping it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Just create that shape. And like I said, with the, even with the butterflies that are that came and I put on my mirror, there's so many shapes and colors and options. So then add the lower portion of the wings and same thing, go into the light color and then to the dark color. And the other thing I want to mention though here is that I did the same thing. I let the upper section of the wing dry completely before I added the lower bit. So that's the same idea. You want to make sure that you're not going to be working next to something that is still possibly ruinable because if you're like me you are going to ruin it if you do that i know that i have done a couple things when i've even when i'm painting and i'll do a section and then i'll go do something right next to it and i'll set my hand right into the wet paint yeah that is a problem so i would avoid doing that so i'm going to go through and i'm going to be right next to those wings i'm going to be adding or i'm going to be sculpting out just the little body of my butterfly with black i really wanted a really high contrast so i went with a black black body that's really going to contrast with the white flower as well as these really bright wings so you're going to need to add head abdomen thorax or thorax and abdomen either way it's kind of like head shoulders knees and toes so just add all of his body parts just like just like that and i originally did them and then i thought they weren't quite large enough so i'm just going to increase their size just a pinch around there and just kind of pinch in on the sides to make sure that you don't lose those divisions in body segment and then peel off the wings from the nail form backing provided that they are set and dry and then set a tweezers around the body of the butterfly add a little bit of acrylic over his thorax just a little bit just to where his wings are going to attach a little bit more of the black acrylic just set that on there and then pick up a wing and set it into that wet acrylic and have it rest on the edge of the tweezers this is going to give the wings that v shape that you're going for since they aren't just going to be lying flat and then you're going to go through and add a little bit more acrylic to his head and then place a piece of thread into that wet acrylic or two pieces of thread to create his antennas just a little bit just like that and if you are like me again you're going to be fighting that thread because it wants to go every single direction besides into the wet acrylic and then take a little more wet acrylic and place that over the top of that thread just to make sure that it isn't going to run away and then go through and add a little bit more acrylic to his head thorax abdomen whole nine yards really seal in and hold those wings into place at the moment they are in there and they are set but they're really delicate so you really need to add some more acrylic so that they don't just break because that's the goal in all this you don't want everything to be so unbelievably delicate it's just going to break on you so now i'm going to be creating a little pedestal that is going to be underneath my butterfly's body and i'm doing this with clear acrylic because you don't want it to be seen and it pretty much isn't once it's all said and done so just add a couple little beads of acrylic and sort of push them in so that you have a little stool for him to be setting on and then cut six pieces of thread of just plain black thread this is actually upholstery thread because it's a little bit heavier but regular thread will work just as fine too this is just Basically, it's whatever thread I can find in my sewing drawer is what I use. So I'm going to take and put a little bit of nail glue on the top of that pedestal, grab a piece of thread and set it in there. You may notice that every single piece of thread I am grabbing has a knot in it. I spent the time to knot all of those to create a joint in his legs, only to think about it and realize that I don't need them and that that would make his legs far too long and spidery. And I just ended up cutting them off all above the knot anyway later on. So I just decided that you didn't need to watch me do that because it's time consuming and unnecessary completely so then attach his body on top of all those legs with a little bit of clear acrylic so place the acrylic on there and then set your butterfly on the top of that and hold it until it's set trim off all of his legs to the right length if you're me you're just going to cut them off with the knot because you realize that that knot's just not important and then stick a little bit of nail glue on the end of each leg and then grab a tweezers and hold his leg onto the nail now the reason you want to do this with tweezers is because if you try to do this with your fingers you are going to get so covered in nail glue that you are going to be stuck together all your fingers are going to be attached it's going to be a big problem you'll probably glue yourself to the nail i know i've done that once or twice so just use a tweezers it just works out better that way and also if you just struggle with nail glue this process will probably be a little bit aggravating especially if you're like me i'm doing a lot of that today if you're like me you're gonna have troubles with this but the nail glue does cause me grief so just bear with it but it is necessary in this particular circumstance to use it because anything else is not going to hold them down and then after you have all of those legs glued down which like i said is quite the process 
Then you're going to want to take and you're going to be highlighting everything with some diluted white paint. So I'm going to start with all of the petals on the flower. And you could have done this before you added the butterfly on there. It might have been easier, but I didn't want to get the paint out twice, which I know is kind of a lazy thing to say. But it wasn't out and I wasn't there yet and I just figured I'd finish all the acrylic stuff at one time. So you're also going to want to very subtly highlight the butterfly's body too, just so that you kind of break up the monotony of all of that black. And then I'm going to take black paint and I'm going to be adding all of the details to the butterfly's wings. So I'm going to start start on the upper wings I'm going to do just a whole bunch of little lines pulling from the edge of the wing towards his body and then thicken up the very edge of the line or the very edge of the wing with the black and then go ahead and repeat that on the other side so I went back and forth and I did one side and then the other side and then you know continued on in that way just because if you do like the entire thing and then go back you might not remember what it was exactly that you did but if you go do it this way then you're not going to forget and it's probably going to become more symmetrical or maintain its symmetricalness. Yeah. So then I'm going to do the lower wings. And I did those a little bit differently, a little different pattern. And I am looking at a butterfly as I'm doing this. I didn't follow the picture that I was basing this off of exactly because I didn't like it 100%. But if you do look at a butterfly as you're doing this, you're going to be creating shapes or replicating shapes that will possibly actually happen in nature, which is a good thing to do. So then after you have the one side done, go ahead and repeat it on the other side, just like you did for the upper wings. And the same thing kind of goes for the underside. After I had everything done on the top, I went through and I flipped him over and it's a little bit awkward to paint because you really want to make sure you avoid getting any black paint on your white flower. But flip it over and repeat all of these patterns on the underside as well. So just turn that over and I know that it's really hard to see what I'm doing in the video because partially my camera's out of focus and then it's just upside down. But repeat it on the underside too. That's just going to make sure that that from any angle this butterfly looks like he's finished which is really important so just add those little lines on there and as you're doing this I know for me progressively as I was painting I got faster and faster at painting these patterns it started out a little bit slower because I was figuring out where I was putting different things but as you do it it goes really quick and these little outlines don't take all of that much time so then finish off that last piece there just like that and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to take white or no I'm still taking black paint and I'm going to just do the edges the edges of the wings because they weren't black all the way around and then with white paint I'm going to be adding little white polka dots and all of the thicker black lines so basically this is just right around the edge of the wings just a whole bunch of little teeny tiny dots try to do this with your very finest brush and get only the smallest amount of white paint on the brush as you can the less paint on the brush the smaller your dots are going to be so if you really load up your brush getting these teeny tiny dots is going to be darn near impossible but if you only get a teensy amount of paint on there it's not going to be too bad so then go through and add a little bit of gel sealer to the clear nail that is showing behind the flower and then gel sealer over the top of your butterfly to make sure that he's nice and shiny and then I also added just a dab of gel sealer on the ends of his antennas to make sure that they didn't fray after that's cured I'm going to be adding matte top coat over the top of the flower and this is kind of weird going around his legs but it does work and that is it I really really love this nail even just the flower on its own I was in love with that flower by itself and then I was thinking oh but I have to add the butterfly on top of it but it's I'm pretty happy with it so I hope you guys like it too and please share recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram I would love to see them and I will see you in my next video bye